Well, 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 look what the cat dragged in. Welcome to the fun. You were one of the last people we ever expected to get on this show, you know that. Well, I must admit, Lucifer, uh, I'm a little bit surprised myself, but um, it's good to be here. You're looking good, man. Lean, mean. Looks like you've been laying off the mince pies and uh, picking up the weights. <laughs> well, it turns out that uh, if you have trouble sticking to a diet, stress can certainly help. Well, you're rocking that leather, bro. Thanks, Lucifer. You know, after everything that happened, I didn't hear a word from any of my friends. I bet you got totally holy ghosted by those two flops upstairs, too, huh? Your friend Astaroth was actually the first to reach out to me. You know Astaroth, the Duke of fucking Doom? <laughs> yes. Astaroth and I go back many, many years. I mean, he's a misunderstood character. A lot of people don't realize that he's a real philosopher and can talk to you for hours about handicrafts. Yeah, and... Astaroth's a great guy, but uh, that dragon he rides. Can we pull it up? Yeah, look at that thing. Those crazy eyes, I'm sure as he doesn't feed him right because he always looks starving. That is 350 pounds of just claws and scales coming at you. And when that tail whips around, the dunk! It takes out whole crowds of the damned and then he's on them. And those hands, they could rip you apart like a loaf of bread. Oh gosh. Well, look, anyway, I hope you're feeling nice and comfy in the studio here, Santa, because uh, we got the AC pumping for you. You're used to Sub-Zero, right? Where is it you're from? Finland or Alaska or some shit? I do miss the cooler climate, but uh, I've actually been spending a lot of time in Libya recently. Cool. The people there don't know me very well, or at all, which makes things a lot easier, and... You know, as long as you don't upset the wrong people, then you can find a way to get along and maybe a little bit of give and take and all that, but uh, you do what you do to get by and, uh, you know, it's, it's not so bad once you get used to it and you... So look, how do we get things going? Uh, you want to sing a Christmas song or something? Oh, I'm not allowed to sing Christmas songs anymore. That was all part of the IP, so... What? No Frosty the Snowman? No Jingle Bells? Well, you know, Jingle Bells is actually a Thanksgiving song. Get out of town. Santa dashing through the snow in his sleigh is a Thanksgiving song? Come on, bro. Well, Lou, I understand your confusion, but uh, I'm not mentioned at all if you listen closely enough to the song. It's actually about a young man driving through New England on a horse-drawn sleigh. No reindeer involved. So you're telling me that this whole time everyone's just been singing about some douche in Boston? <laughs> that young fellow gets up to some mischief in later verses. Now the ground is white, go it while you're young. Take the girls tonight and sing their slaying song. Just get a bop tail. Hey, so uh, I've always wanted to know more about the elves. Are they proportioned like humans, just smaller? Or are they more like dwarves or goblins or something? Well, their proportions are roughly similar to humans, but they're just three foot tall. Really? Yes, and they have beautiful melodious voices. They sing as they work. And they have pale blonde hair and... Beautiful eyes. And what level of strength would you say they have? Oh, uh, I don't know. Probably about the same level as a powerful adult human male. Yeah, because they're hauling that stuff all day. Big volumes of merchandise. Deadlifts to pick it up, overhead presses to get that shit in the sleigh. So you're talking full body compound movements, clean and jerk style, all day every day. Wow. These guys have got to be shredded. Oh, no muscle at all, really. They're perfectly lean and pale. I wonder how many elves it would take to work over a big herd of elephants. Well, I'm not sure elves are hostile to elephants. And do elves have a kind of mind melt thing going on? You know, like the Borg, where they can sort of act as one? Well, in a way, yes. They can communicate without speech, but... It's more pheromonal than anything we might understand as telepathic, so closer to swarm-like behavior. Holy fuck. Insects are crazy, man. 
Did you see those locusts in Peru just laying waste to acres of farmland? Well, the elves don't really fly. Lucifer. Imagine this beautiful, melodious music just like pumping out of this insane elf hive as they like eviscerate a herd of 100 elephants. And it's just carnage, and there's blood and tusk and bone fucking everywhere as far as the eye can see. And the elves are just like flying above it all like, la 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 la. Hey, uh, you want some of this virgin blood? You ever tried it? Oh, uh, <laughs> only if I've cut my finger or something like that. What? Wait a minute, are you fucking serious? <laughs> You're telling me that Santa's never had any? I'm afraid it's true. <laughs> but what about Mrs. Claus? Mrs. Claus is a fiction. It was all optics. That was about the same time Coca-Cola got involved. Bro, when that Coke ad comes on, you know what I'm talking about. Holidays are coming. Holidays are coming. Just thousands of trucks burning that festive gas. People love that shit, man. Well, they went completely over me to get that approved. Oh, goodness me, that's uh, quite a heady aroma. We'd be there, smoking a bowl on some rainy ass day in November. Me, Azeroth, Asmodeus, you'd be there too, right? Yeah. <laughs> and that ad would come on, and we'd all just be like, oh, fuck. It's that time of year again. Hey, you only wore red because Coke made you, right? Before that, your robes were green or brown or some shit. Well, no, actually. <laughs> it's a total myth. Much as I'm sure Coca-Cola would love to believe they have that level of influence over me, uh, I wore red long before they came on the scene. <laughs> Whoa, the vapors from that virgin blood are really fucking kicking in, huh? Have a sip, Nikki. It's good shit. 12.9%. Wow, that seems rather strong. Oh, uh, from where do you source the blood? Don't ask, don't tell. That's my policy. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> I told you it was good, bro. Remember, 15% uh, off with code SANTA15 for the holiday season. <sighs> so, man, I uh, must be feeling good to have the night off. We partying tonight? Well, sure. Yes, we're popping Santa's cherry tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so if you still got your V card, that doesn't really line up with what they're saying about you, right? Oh, uh, it was all lies. Oh, come on now, Nikki. You're trying to tell me that you've spent all that time creeping around people's houses in the dead of night and you never even took a peek? Checking out the family photos on the mantelpiece, slipping through that chimney and seeing that hot milk with the goods all pushed up and juicy, just waiting for no, you. No, no, no. Husband's away for Christmas. You know she wants a good ho-ho-hoing. No, no. A mince pie for me, a carrot for Rudolph, and we were well satisfied. Rudolph got in on the action, too? No! Whoa. This is all coming together in my head like a painting by that mad English guy we had on the show last week. What's he called? <laughs> William Blake, that's the dude. Uh, look at this one he did of me. Great definition in the back. And those quads, whew, look at that, babe. She can't believe her eyes. They'll be falling for you like that later tonight, Nikki. <laughs> I love this one, too. He drew me teabagging Poseidon. Oh, hello. There it is. There's old Nikki and Rudolph with the poor bastard they just cocked. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, take it easy, Nikki. You gotta savor it. Pace yourself. <laughs> he said he didn't do it. Hmm, that's a very striking design, though. What does that say? Rotting Christ. Can you believe that? 
It's this uh, Greek black metal band. They have this whole Hellenic thing over there, so they like really love hell and shit. Rotting Christ. Huh. <laughs> so that long-haired prick just left you hanging in the breeze, huh? He was always nice to my face, you know, but uh, the vibe was always off. I guess he kind of thought I stole his thunder. I don't know. Some people are weird about their birthdays. Yeah, he's a jealous son of a bitch. Takes after his old man. You ever run into that asshole? Oh, uh, maybe once. The guy is losing the plot, bro. Have you heard him talk? There she lusted after her lovers, whose genitals were like those of donkeys, and whose emission was like that of horses. And this is the guy running shit? This is the guy in charge? Give me a break. Well, uh, I don't know about that, Lou. I'm telling you, with all the shit coming down on you, don't be surprised if he's got a hand in it. Well, there are a lot of vested interests that could stand to benefit. Yeah? Like who? Well, just think about it for a second, Lou. A totally unregulated agent delivering boxed goods directly to houses around the world overnight and not asking for jack shit in return. Some people might find that a little threatening. Wait, are you talking about, uh, Bezos? Well, Amazon and their subsidiaries certainly stand to gain something from all of this. Nah, man, Jeff's cool. We played a lot of Quake back in the day. We've been trying to get him on the show, but, uh, he keeps flaking Well, on it me. isn't just him. They all know that the Santa brand completely dwarfs all others in terms of name recognition, global reach. There wasn't a kid in 161 countries who didn't want to sit on my lap. Ah, uh, so what? Of course, decided... they kept coming to me with their bullshit offers trying to buy me out, but they just got laughed out of the room. So what? They started turning the screw? Ego's a bitch, right? You know, the writer of Jingle Bells, his nephew, J.P. Morgan. Put the pieces together, Lou, it's crystal clear. You take out the big dog and the rats come scurrying in. Guess they couldn't see past the jolly old fat man. Bet they never thought you'd have it in you, bite back. Ugh. Take a shit in their yard. You know, Lou, some years I'd take the naughty list and the nice list. In just some kid who tied a firecracker to a kitten, woke up with a PS5. Whoa! They think they've got me on the ropes. But I'm a semp eternal being, Lou. Beware the fury of the patient man. Hmm. So what does that mean? You got some, uh, presents waiting for them in Santa's sack? <laughs> well, I got something up my sleeve. Oh, nice. Santa got ink. Holy shit! Put that away! <laughs> Pretty out there, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Shit, uh, we're out of time, so we gotta wrap this thing up. Thanks so much for coming on the show, Santa. Big admirer of all your shit. Uh, don't get on this guy's naughty list. Are we still partying tonight, Lou?